Hi everyone, welcome to my channel of Techverse. Let's talk about how you can make a further that works in Vata. The final build is as shown. It's a very cool project. So here, this is the bottom side. The PCB looks like this. So the input here you have your 12 volts and the input filtering capacitor. Here you have the five core MOSFETs parallel together and the other MOSFETs parallel together. Here you have your output. So this is the center top of the transformer. This is one end of the primary winding and the other end of the primary winding. So if you don't want to use a power transformer, you can just tap your transformer at these three points. And this is the IC and this biasing circuit. So the circuit is not complicated as indicated. So connect everything like shown here. So connect the power pins 12 and 7 to VCC and ground respectively. Then connect the pin 1 and 16 to ground, pin 4 to ground, pin 2 and 15 to 5 volts generated by pin 14. Connect pin 3 to, two vo to pin 2 via this to 20 ohms resistor and connect pin 13 to 5 volts from the 14 from the pin 14 so to control the output frequency you need to carefully select the parameters of capacitor C2 and R1 you can use 100 nanofarads and 100 kilo ohms to get 50 hertz or you can use any other values and apply this formula to get your desired frequency so when connected as shown by pulling up in 13 to 5 volts the outputs will be operating in the push-pull configuration that is the emitters E1 and E2 will be operating as complementaries of each other just just connect these current limiting resistors R2 and R3 to protect the IC from damage since it has an output capacity of about 200 milliampers maximum so depending on the pass array you are using just don't exceed 200 milliampers but for the same set don't go past 100 milliampers since that it's more than enough to turn on MOSFETs anyways so when you pile 5 of these MOSFETs you can easily handle more than 450 amperes since each is written for 100 amperes and the drain source voltage is adequate enough I think they are written for 55 volts so that's more than enough also connect the discharge resistors R6 and R7 to ensure that the MOSFETs are completely turned off when not being driven this will prevent any latch-ups it can damage your MOSFETs or drain your power supply so where this works is when E1 is high so Q1, Q3, Q7, Q5 and Q8 will turn on and this will allow current to flow through the lower side of the primary winding through the MOSFETs and to ground. When the E1 turns off, all these MOSFETs will turn off. So E2 will then turn on and Q2, Q4, Q6, Q9 and Q10 will conduct. This will allow current to flow through the other half primary winding through the MOSFETs and to ground. So the transformer core is reset on each cycle, meaning that it can be driven at maximum duty cycle. So for the transformer, if you want 4000 watts, I recommend you use one from a welding device or if you have a transformer with a right sized core enough to output 4000 watts, you can use one. So this simple inverter can be easily modeled to handle any wattage from 1000 to 5000 watts depending on the components you have. Just ensure that the transistors you select, they can easily handle the required current and the transformer can handle the required output power capacity. You can easily rewind your transformer to get custom output voltages such as 240 volts, 230 volts, 220 volts, or even 110 and 120 volts. So that's all for this simple inverter project. So don't forget to like this video, comment if you have any suggestions, and 
subscribe to my channel for more amazing tutorials and projects. I'll see you in the next episode. Have a nice time.